Dengizic, died in 469, was a Hunnic ruler and son of Attila. After Attila's death in 453 AD, his empire crumbled and its remains were ruled by his three sons, Elek, Dengizic and Ernak. He succeeded his older brother Elek in 454 AD, and probably ruled simultaneously over the Huns in dual kingship with his brother Ernak, but separate divisions in separate lands. History The oldest brother Elek died in 454 AD, at the Battle of Nedau. Jordanus recorded, "...when Elek was slain, his remaining brothers were put to fight near the shore of the Sea of Pontus where we have said the Goths settled dwelling again in their ancient abodes." Jordanus recounts events in c. 454–455. After the Ostrogoths led by their king Valamir, and his brothers Theodomir and Vidomir received Pannonia now it happened that the sons of Attila, regarding the Goths as deserters from their rule, came against them as though they were seeking fugitive slaves and attacked Valamir alone, when his brothers knew nothing of it. He sustained their attack, though he had but few with him, and after harassing them a long time, so utterly overwhelmed them that scarcely a portion of the enemy remained. The remnant turned in flight and sought the parts of Scythia which border on the stream of the river Danaba, which the Huns call in their own tongue Var. Whereupon he sent a messenger of good tidings to his brother Theodomir. On the very day the messenger arrived, Theodoric was born in 454. Priscus recorded that in 465–466, Dengizic and his brother Ernak sent diplomats to Constantinople. They wanted a peace treaty, and a market place on Danube according to the ancient customs between Romans and Huns, but were rejected. Then Dengizic on his own moved to the bank of the Istros lower Danube and threatened to break into Thrace unless he's granted with lands and subsidies. He looked down the negotiations with Anagast who defended the Danube in Thrace, and sent diplomats directly to the Emperor Leo I. However, Leo I replied that, "...he was ready to do everything if they came to him and offered him obedience. He took pleasure, he said, in nations which came seeking alliances." In 467, Dengizic crossed the frozen Danube, and although expected the Huns in the south to join him, large groups of undefined Goths and Scythians moved on their own. Probably after the turning battle of Nedau, some groups of Goths still remained under Hun authority. Basiliscus, Goths Anagast and Ostreich, and Hun Chelchul were generals who led Roman armies. They managed to besiege the Goths into a valley, and the Scythians. Oppressed by hunger and lack of necessities sent an embassy to the Romans that if they were to surrender and be allotted lands, they would obey the Romans in whatever they wanted." Report continues. The ambassadors reported the instructions to the Scythians, who arranged themselves into as many segments as Asper and the Romans formed. Chelchul, a man of the Hunnic race and a subordinate of Aspar's commanders, went to the barbarian segment assigned to them. He summoned the leading men of the Goths they were in the majority and began saying that the emperor would give them land, not for their own use but for the Huns among them. Perturbed by his words but believing that Chelchul had spoken benevolently, the Goths banded together and slew the Huns among them. A violent battle arose on both sides. Aspera and commanders of other camps drew up their troops and killed the barbarians they came upon. When the Scythians figured out the trickery and deceit, they called themselves together and turned against Romans. Aspar's men had destroyed them the segment assigned to them. The barbarians fought so violently that their survivors cut through the Roman lines and in this way escaped the siege. Anagast sent a large group of Bacellari against the barbarians, but the war dragged on for two years. Jordanus recounts events in c. 468. Now after firm peace was established between Goths and Romans, the Goths found that what they received from the emperor was not sufficient for them. Furthermore, they were eager to display their wanted valour, and so began to plunder the neighbouring peoples around them, first attacking the Sadagis, who held the interior of Pannonia. 
When Dintzik, king of the Huns, a son of Attila, learned this, he gathered to him the few who still seemed to have remained under his sway, namely, the Ulfsingers, the Angiskiri, the Bitigurs, and the Bardors. Coming to Bassianai, see Battle of Bassianai, a city of Pannonia, he beleaguered it and began to plunder its territory. When the Goths learned this, they abandoned the expedition they had planned against the Sadagis and turned upon the Huns and drove them so ingloriously from their own land that those who remained have been in dread of the arms of the Goths from that time down to the present day. The war ended in 469. Marcellinus comes shortly recorded. The head of Dinzic, son of Attila, king of the Huns, was brought to Constantinople. The Chronicon Paschal recounts. Dinzericus, Attila's son, was killed by Anagasts, general in Thrace. His head was brought to Constantinople, carried in procession through the middle street, and fixed on a pole at the wooden circus. The whole city turned out to look at it. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The name recorded as Dengizich de N Gizik by Priscus has abbreviated variant Din Gizidin G I Z in Chronicon Paschal, Den Git Zich by Marcellinus Comes, and Din G I T Z I C by Jordanus. Din T Zich and Denzik render a Germanic pronunciation asterisk Denitzik, with the frequent dropping of G. Otto Meinchen Helfen considered it a derivation from Turkish asterisk Dezik, meaning little lake. Omulgen Pritzak considered the reconstructed form deer plus sig greater than deer sig, with the meaning, ocean-like. <laughs> Notes <laughs>